everyone, welcome to the retirement sessions. Okay, today I'm at a new venue, Elvington Fisheries, which is down to the east of York. For those that know the area uh, and know Raker Lakes, it's just past Raker Lakes um, on the same road at Weldrake Lane, they call it. Just past there, about uh, five minutes past it. It's uh, about, I suppose about three and a half, four acres, the lake. It has, um, it's a mixed fishery. It has carp to 30 pounds. The, uh, the lake record is 31 pounds, a ghost carp apparently. And it has catfish um, knocking on to 70 pounds in here. So um, hopefully uh, um, we'll keep clear of those. Although it would be good fun if uh, we did get into one of those uh, and that towed you around the lake for uh, half an hour or so. So yeah, um, it's uh, seven pounds for three rods, which is very, very good. And as I say, because it's a mixed fishery, then there is a chance that, uh, um, you know, you will get into uh, other fish besides the carp. So uh, there's a lot of bream in here, so um, they could be a blank uh, saver if, uh, if that's necessary. The lake varies in depth from about five feet in some of the margins to 18 feet um, in places. So it's, uh, it's varying depths and uh, the, um, the guy that runs it has, um, has walked me round a couple of the pegs and shown me the spots and he's advised that uh, I fish this particular peg that I'm on now and he's given me a couple of spots here. Um, he said the last fish he saw out was um, a few weeks ago and that was a, uh, a 10 pound mirror. Um, where a young lad and his father caught that. But apart from that, he said, with the conditions being cold, it's going to be hard work. But uh, today is a little bit warmer, so we'll see how we go. So there we go. I'm going to get set up now, and, uh, and then uh, I'll get back to you with, uh, with my spots, my rigs, my bait, etc., and see how we go. in all three rods in uh, use the boat to, uh, to put them out the reason it's taken so long is I got here at quarter past eight new new venue by the time I had a walk around half an hour chatting to the um, to the guy that runs the place and you know it was like quarter past 20 past nearly half past nine by the time I decided on which peg um, I was on and then quickly setting up so 10 o'clock and I've got three rods in just describe um, where I've got my rods. Um, I've got a, a pair of rods on my rod pod in front of me uh, to the right of my swim or straight straight out down the lake and um, I'm in the sort of right right hand corner here and there's a, a, a large overhanging tree which um, which has got some branches that, that dip almost into the water and I've got um, I've got my rig just short of that where there's another little bush about two or three feet out, locked up tight, um, and, uh, and that's my first rig. And on that, I've got just a, uh, a running lead with a wafter on there and uh, loose boilie, uh, crumbed boilie and sweet corn uh, as free offerings on my uh, left hand rod here straight out in front of us there's a windmill and the same distance to the tree on the right I've got that uh, straight out there in a line um, equidistant with the the tree that I was talking about to the right and I've got that on a mega method feeder uh, again with some free offerings and then behind me um, at the back end of the lake there's another area with a an old peg which is now disused 
and it's a clear area and there is a willow tree which comes right down into the water and some dead dead or sorry uh, 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 some new willow hatching out uh, to the left of it and I've got my uh, I've got I've got my rig just in there and it's, it's on a lead clip with with a wafter basically um, and uh, and free offerings of boilie and sweet corn and that again is locked up tight about two feet from uh, from the snag so uh, you need to be on that one very quickly well both of the of the uh, two that are locked up and fishing close to the snags very quickly um, should we get a bite so there we are 10 o'clock rods are in what i'm going to do in a moment is uh there, there could be some rain this afternoon about two ish so i'm going to get the shelter set up so i've got a bit of uh, a bit of shelter in case we get get a spot but it's a lovely uh, a lovely area this uh, when the sun comes out etc um nice venue as i say probably three Three and a half acres, I said five at the beginning, but it's probably three, three and a half acres now. Uh, I've looked at it and done a better estimation. Rearranging just one of the rods, the left hand rod. I've decided to uh, to go. If you look at the windmill that is uh, is out there, at the base of the windmill is a peg. Just to the right of that, there is a uh, a tree, bushy area. I'm about two rod lengths off there. It's a shallower area. So I thought uh, it's one of the areas that the guy pointed out this morning has been one of the spots. So I've moved my uh, mega method feeder rod over there with a few free offerings, pellet, and see how we do. Quick update, it's uh, it's now 12, 12 o'clock, had my rods in for two hours. I've had a couple of knocks on my left hand rod on the pod on the mega method feeder, a couple of knocks um, since I moved it over to the area that I described and I've seen quite a bit of movement over there. So fingers crossed, pick something up from that area. I've left the other two where they are uh, in the close close in to the left and right and I've just um, rebated them from from the uh, uh, from the bank basically it's, it's easy enough to do that so yeah it's uh, it's all quiet on the western front as it were fingers crossed we can get a fish okay just after uh, one o'clock and uh, it's lunchtime and we're gonna have a sober wok style noodle again cup noodle and I'll probably have a cup of coffee with it, or a cup of tea. Um, but that's what we're having for lunch, just after one o'clock, as I say. Um, just had a knock on my left-hand rod, which is um, at the rear of the swim in, in, this, in the snags. That was probably about 20 minutes ago. So I'm hoping uh, those knocks are gonna turn into something, but we'll see. Right, quick updates, just after two o'clock. I'm about the halfway stage of my session now. I'm gonna fish till six ish six thirty ish sat pack up at about six um so i can leave it about six thirty and uh apart from a few knocks um nothing yet just one point uh that i failed to mention when i was uh, giving you the details of the venue um it is day days only you can't night fish here but you can fish right right till you know quarter to ten in the evening in summer uh, 9 45 um, and at the moment it's till 7 45 now that the evenings are lighter 
So, uh, sorry, I was I just had a knock on my rod there, and I was um, I was uh, looking out of the shelter for that. So there we go. Update, it's uh, four o'clock, so I've got about two hours left now. Still getting a couple of knocks on on uh, on a couple of rods, but nothing more than that. And, and that, of course, could be small stuff as, as it is a mixed uh, fishery. What I'm gonna do is uh, I've pulled in my uh, method feeder rod, which was right across the other side of the lake. And uh, I'm gonna keep recasting that every half an hour now to uh, different locations. See if I can pick something up, uh, you never know. Um, so it's coffee time. Um, recast the um, recast the method feeder rod every half an hour now, and uh, use up those pellets. And we'll see if we can pick anything up. Right, it's coffee time and Kit Kat. So yeah, a bit of refreshment. And then, uh, as I said, we're into the final couple of hours. So I'm going to recast the uh, method feeder rod now every half an hour, different spots, and see if uh, we can pick anything up. Right, we're into the final hour now. I had a run um, at about a quarter past four, picked the rod up, but uh, came to nothing. So uh, could have been something small that picked it up, um, or it could have been uh, a fish that just ejected it. Um, we'll never know. But at least, um, at least I've had a run, so it was something of interest. Um, and that was on the uh, method feeder rod that uh, I'd recast literally sort of 20 minutes before. So yeah, into my final hour, I'm going to uh, I'm going to fish until six o'clock, then pack up uh, and call it a day. So fingers crossed, we can still get a fish before we call it a day. Right, it's six o'clock. Um, I've got two rods remaining in the water. I'm going to pack them up now and uh, and call it a day. So it's, uh, it's, it's a blank at Elvington Fisheries, um, the first time I've been here, but I reckon it's one that I'm gonna come back to when the conditions are warmer, because it is a deep old lake, you know, 18 feet in places, and uh, consequently, it, it takes a long time for it to warm up and the, uh, the fish will then uh, move about and probably bite a bit more. So what I'm gonna do next week, I think, is, uh, is concentrate on a shallower water and uh, see how we go from there. But it's a first, it's a first uh, visit to this place and I've enjoyed it today. It's been a different location and uh, it's a nice little venue, albeit we need some fish on the bank. So I think it's worth a visit in the future when the conditions are a bit warmer. So I'll say, um, goodbye for the moment i'm going to be out on saturday with um with jonathan and uh and my grandson caleb we're going to do um southfields a pond to see how we go there with the little one doing a bit of fishing there so i'll be out on retirement sessions next tuesday or wednesday possibly tuesday and as i say i'm going to be trying a uh, facility that's a bit shallower and hopefully the conditions will be a bit warmer by then so all remains to say is uh, is goodbye and all the best. everybody and welcome to the retirement sessions today I'm back at Southfields I wanted to stay local I thought about going a bit further afield down to the York area whatever but then I, I considered that I, I'd just been to Elvington last week uh, blank there so I thought I'd come back to uh, Southfield uh, B pond and uh, and chase that elusive 20 again put some more time in on the bank chasing that 20 so here I am, 
it's uh, it's midweek it's Wednesday I've got a good full day I got here at uh, about quarter past seven had a good walk around I saw um, several fish cruising and then when I got down to the car park end of the lake the same group of fish I'm pretty sure um, were cruising down that end so they seem to have a cruising patrol route first thing in the morning um, where they go so uh, that's something to uh, to look at for later on i've just got my rods in it's it's about quarter to nine i've had um i've had them in roughly since about half past eight i've just got my third rod in now as i say quarter quarter to nine i've had them in roughly just to cast out um of two rods to uh two areas where i'm fishing close to snags um and uh i'll go through the locations etc uh, in a moment what i'm going to do is i'm going to reset all of those now with using the bait boat uh, and get some uh, some extra bait out, uh, some sweet corn and crushed up boilies uh, with them. Um, get some attractors in there if you like, and we'll see how we go from there. So what I'm going to do then is uh, is reset the rods, get the kettle on, have a brew, and then I'll talk you through where I've got my rigs um, because I'm not actually down the bottom end where I normally fish today, um, or the car park end. I'm right in the middle of the lake. I thought I'd try it here. There are two snaggy areas, one either side of the lake, which I'm fishing close up to, locked up tight. And then I've got my third rod at the moment in the middle of the lake on a fixed zig rig. It's about a three foot, so it'll be about 18 inches to two feet off the surface here, uh, because it's, a, it's about an average of five foot uh, deep. And I've just got to put a pink pop up on there and we'll see how, uh, how that goes. So there we are, that's the introduction. I'll get my uh, rigs reset now, have a brew, and then I'll talk you through where things are. rig time and where things are right to the right of my swim about a couple of rod lengths two and a half rod lengths away I've got a fallen tree lovely snaggy area very carpy looking and uh, I've got a rig on a running lead deposited there about 18 inches off the front um, front right hand corner of that tree basically and what I've done there is deposited uh, with the boat, crumbed up boily and sweet corn. And I'm fishing there, my maggot rig, with a couple of worms on there. I thought it's still a little bit cold. Let's try some worm, let's see if, uh, see how that goes. If that doesn't work later on, I'll switch it to a wafter or a boily. Then, straight out center of my, uh, of my swim, between the two swims that are opposite, there is another fallen tree, and again, Great snaggy area, and I've got a rig, again, just off to the right-hand end of that snaggy area. There's an open sort of area, and I've got a rig in there about a foot off the rig. Again, locked up tight, and I've got that on the Mega Method feeder with a wafter on there. Again, with some, uh, some deposit of uh, crumbed up boilie and some pellet. Far bank to the left of the... Uh, of the area where I've got my center rod, there is an area with a tree with a, a load of daffodils um, in the area. I've got my uh, my zig about two or three feet off that bank, and that's just uh, just holding there. We'll see how that goes. So there's the rigs. I'm going to get a coffee on now uh, and see um, and see how we do. Well, it's a, a rainy old day. First thing I did this morning was get the shelter up before I could uh, get, get the rods out. And uh, it's a forecast for light rain all day. So there we are, um, it's in. I think it's here all day. So uh, it's a matter of grin and bear it and get on with it, which is what I've done, having set the shelter up first and then uh, um, and then sorted things out around, around that. Uh, nothing yet, 
had the rods in for about an hour now um, and uh, it's still pretty quiet. As I say, I saw fish cruising first thing, but uh, nothing more than that. You don't generally get many, many signs here of fish boshing and, uh, um, and that general sort of sign that, that, that the fish are there in the spots. Uh, it's a matter of, um, of trying spots out, knowing the spots uh, and seeing how we go from there. So there we go, just, af just after an hour. Um, coffee's on the go, nothing uh, in the net yet, and it's a wet old day. Right, I thought I'd tell you the story of the worms. Basically, you may have seen this as a reference in other um, videos, but uh, we're doing some groundwork in uh, Foxy Jonathan's back garden, digging out a patch for uh, the swing for the boys. Um, and we noticed when we were digging it out, it's a very uh, clay, clay based area. It was really wet and we noticed that there were loads of worms. So we, uh, we grabbed a, a container out of the garage, a um, bit of moss in there, a bit of soil and, uh, and threw all the worms in. So these are Darlington worms and hopefully um, we, can, we can catch something on them. I haven't caught anything on them yet like we tried them out last Saturday when we went with uh, with my grandson Caleb um, didn't didn't catch in fact yeah we did we caught a roach on the worms um, but uh, we haven't uh, we haven't had any carp yet but I've got them on one rig as I've said and uh, we'll see how we go so yeah so that's the story of the worms outside it's uh, it's a rainy old day I'm afraid the rain is uh, forecast for all day light rain um, and it's this sort of drizzly horrible stuff um, that's coming down at the moment so there's going to be no respite from that I don't think or if there is I'll get out and I'll do a bit more uh, um, filming of, uh, of certain areas but it might have to be uh, from the inside of the bivy a lot of it uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to reset the rod slightly in a moment just move things slightly to see if they uh, they fare any better but I've had a knock on uh, or a line bite on the uh, on the zig rod the left hand rod that was a while ago probably three quarters of an hour to an hour um, and that's all the action I've seen and I saw a fish boshing out and coming up to the surface just to the left of my swim about a couple of rod lengths out which is unusual here so what I might do is um, is put that zig in that area and put some other bait in there to uh, to attract the fish Right, it's bovril time I think, horrible rainy day, nice cup of bovril, one was up, I've just reset the rods as I said, so uh, let's wait and see what happens, that's all we can do. Not a nice day as I say, but uh, at least we're out on the bank, getting wet, and dangling a line or two, that's all we can do. Don't tell anyone, but another really good thing about coming to Southfield around Easter time is, as you pay for your ticket, you get given an Easter egg. It's got to be a winner. So there we go. Easter at Southfield. Great stuff. Quick update. We're uh, three hours in now. Still very quiet. I've had a couple of knocks or liners on uh, my middle rod, which is over in the far snag on the Mega Method feeder. Um, but nothing more than that, so it is quiet, it is a rainy, uh, coolish day, it's about 7 degrees, so you know, after yesterday, 10, 11, 12 degrees in the sunshine, it, it feels cool, um, and I'm sure the fish feel like that, because they're not playing at the moment, but we'll keep trying, we're on the bank, so we've got to keep doing that.
Okay, here we go. Um, on the the middle rod, the the method freedom rod, picked up this common, which is 11 pounds, four ounces. Give me a right fight as well, it was all over the place, but uh, nice to have on a rainy day. So 11 pound, four ounces common, great stuff. I'll get it back in. Right, it's lunchtime and uh, the kettle's on. I'm gonna have another one of the sober posh noodles, cup noodles. They're not pot noodles, I call them posh noodles. They're very good actually. And I've got a few uh, crackers with it. And then I might have a cup of tea and uh, that'll be good. So there we go, that's lunch. Just coming up to three o'clock and uh, I've had nothing since uh, since the the, uh, the fish I had at 12.30, the uh, the common. There's one, two, three other anglers on the lake. Uh, one guy uh, has has already left. He had a young a young lad with him, three year old, so he did he couldn't put much time in. But none of them have had anything, so um, I suppose I'm quite lucky. Uh, I should consider myself quite lucky as uh, I've had one and they. Uh, they seem to have had nothing. Plenty of fish moving around now. Um, I did say earlier on that um, you don't often see signs of fish boshing around. <laughs> I've seen about two or three uh, this morning and I've, um, I've put the zig straight sort of on that area, um, but had nothing. So um, yeah, fish st starting to move about. A Little bit of wind now, keeping the rain off. Um, hopefully they'll move around a bit more and we'll pick up another bite. There we go, that's uh, 14 and a half pounds. And I caught that on the Zig. Um, so that's great stuff. Lovely mirror in really fine fettle. Smashing fish that, so that's great stuff. I'll get it back in. Right, it's five o'clock and uh, nothing since that last one. I'm gonna fish till six o'clock, so I'm uh, I'm getting a few bits and pieces squared away now uh, in the bivvy, but I'm going to leave the rods in until six, um, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to pack up. Um, I can drive the car down two pegs, disabled peg, and uh, and pack it up from there. So uh, it'll save me a bit of time. So yeah, I'm going to fish till six, and I'm hoping to get another one on the bank. Um, be a good day this sort of weather to get three. Two's good. Um, both doubles. Can't complain at that. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can get uh, make it three. Yeah, quick update. Um, just after five past five, uh, after that uh, last update, I just had a take on the zig, and uh, I lost it unfortunately. I got it um, to a rod length out, and unfortunately you've got to drag it through a lot of weed on this particular swim, um, and uh, I lost it in the weed. Um, I have to take it a bit slower next time. Never mind. We'll try again okay that's the end of the session it's five to six i'm going to uh i'm going to pack up very slowly now um bring the rods in and then uh and then leave stuff in my shelter and uh, and get stuff in the car because it's still raining so yeah um had that uh, had that take there um just after five o'clock and unfortunately like i said there's a lot of weed uh in between here and where i was fishing and uh i just lost it in the weed i'm gonna have to think of a different uh a different approach for next time uh, for dragging a fish through the weed. I mean, there's, there's, there's no way around it. You either drag them through the weed um, or you don't. Um, so yeah, it's been a good day. Three fish, um, two of which I landed. Um, first time I fished a zig and uh, I caught, caught one, had another take on it. So I'm pleased with that. And uh, it's been another good, uh, a good day at Southfield considering the weather. Um, pretty cold and windy and rainy but uh, it's been a good day so um, I'm gonna call it a day now and uh, I'll be out on the uh, on the on the retirement sessions next week 
um, Tuesday or Wednesday after Easter and hopefully the weather will have take, uh, taken a turn for the better. So all I need to say now is uh, um, see you next week and uh, take care. All the best. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you don't already, hit that subscribe button and click the alarm bell to get notifications.